In the previous video of IR drop analysis and simulation, we have learned how to set up design and its voltage regulator modules or VRMs, sync and load components and then we have seen how to do IR drop simulations. In this video we will learn how to apply IR drop simulation constraints in your design for VRs, tracks and planes. So let's get started. Before talking about the constraints, I would highly recommend please go through with previous video of IR drop analysis and follow all the steps. All the demo files are attached in the description, you can download it from there. And once you have executed all the steps carefully, we are good to go for constraint setup. As you know, we have already discussed, we have two load components, U7 and XU2. So one is FPGA controller and another one is DIMM module connector. To add constraint, we have to go to setup syncs from IR drop workflow. And here you can check all the load components. After selecting all the loads, you have to enter its maximum currents and tolerance. And this is how you can set current constraints for loads or sync components. After setting all the values, you have to click over OK. Now let's talk about sync voltage report. If in your case it's not opened already, you can go to view IR drop tables and you have to click on that, then this report will open. Now here we can see couple of things. For example, for sync U7, 1.8 volt and ground net we have fail status and that is happening because of huge IR drop in millivolt. So as you can see the nominal voltage is 1.8 volt actual voltage is 1.7 and we are having 79 millivolt approx 79 millivolt IR drop. So to see where it is failing you have to just select it from the summary table and a detail table will be opened here. Now in the detail table we'll sort this table with maximum IR drop. So as you can see for U7 V31 pin, we have maximum IR drop of 52.864 millivolt. Now to know where it is, you have to just double click on this one. You have to reduce all these IR drops to get this error result. Now how we can reduce the IR drop? So we can clearly see this IR drop issue is either because of this track or because of the VR. If VR's current density is not defined properly, when we'll pass that amount of current through VR, it will drop voltage, all right? So we have to add correct VR properties in the constraints and that we're going to do next. Now we are going to set up and verify VR constraints for simulation. For example, VR current, current density and pad track parameters. To do it, we have to click over setup analysis option from the workflow. And here you have to select current threshold tab. Now in this tab, you will find via current and current density tab. You have to just select that, go to manual. Now here we have to change couple of parameters and the first one is threshold on global via current. So that means if we we'll change or set a current value here, for example, 0.25 amps, that means if there will be any via which can't able to handle that amount of current will be a violation. Now in the next step, we are going to set up pad stack. To do it, we have to select setup by pad stack bullet, right click here and click on add. Now it will give us freedom to add any VR from our design. For example, we are going to add this VR. You have to just go there and select it. And one VR from FPGA controller, you can pick it here. All right. So here we have added two VRs. Now right click and done. Now as per IPC, as you can see, the tool have already calculated the maximum current for these VRs and maximum current density. If you want to put constraint on any of these, you have to change its value here, all right? So in our case, we are not going to change anything. We'll just click over apply and okay. Once we have done with all the constraints, you have to run the analysis by clicking over start analysis button. Once the analysis is complete, we have to go to select the view mode. And from here, we are going to select current density and click over view current density table. Now here we'll get via current table. Now, as you can see, we have couple of fails here. We can sort pass and fail by clicking over pass fail status column. And to know where it is, you have to just double click on any of these fails and it will direct you to a particular location. For this particular via, we have actual current 10.8276 ampere 
but the VI is rated for 0.25. Alright, so here either we have to place couple of more VRs or we have to change the VR property or pad stack. So similarly, we have to replace this VR as well. Now we can go to VR current density and here also you can see the required current density for the VI is 37 but its actual current density is 6.4 amps per mm square. So that means we have to place big VR and this issue will be resolved. Now in the next step, let's talk about how to add constraints for all the traces in our design. Now to add trace constraints, we have to again go to setup analysis and from here, this time we have to select trace current density. Now as you can see, as of now, the global trace current density is set to 72.5981 ampere per mm square, which is too much. So in our case, we are going to change it to 0 0.155 ampere per mm square. Now next step is we have to add all the traces. To do that, we have to right click and select add, go back to our design and we are going to add all the traces which are responsible for bypass capacitors on dim module connector. So first we have to go to the visibility tab, just turn off everything and enable bottom edge. Now these are all the tracks that are responsible for bypass capacitors or power nets. So we'll just select all these together. All right. So as you can see, we have selected all the nets. Now we'll right click and click over done. Now in the next step, we have to add constraints for all the selected nets. To do it, we have to just select all the nets again, go to any of the net and change its value to 0 0.0155 ampere per mm square. And it will be updated for all the tracks that we have selected. Now click on apply and OK. Now we are going to run the analysis again. Then click over start analysis. Once the analysis is done, we have to again click over view current density table and from here go to trace current density tab. So as you can see, these are all the traces which are failing for the current density. So we can see, for example, for this particular track, which is on top layer and its maximum current density is defined as 0.155 but actual required current density is 2.12864 alright so we can see where it is so as you can see this is an potential error we have to make this track thicker alright similarly you can go to all these issues or violations and resolve by changing the width of the track so this is how you can run IR drop analysis and set up constraints for your design for more tutorials, visit us at resources.emaeda.com and don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel.